Hello and welcome back to another video on the channel. So today we're carrying on with this, the RS Propmasters A&H Stunt Helmet. So as I've said before in other videos, this is actually a white ABS kit, but as you'll see by all the overspray inside, it's been fully resprayed. So you'll see areas of red in there, which is where it's had the oxide red uh, primer. It's also got an undercoat of green, which is what we're gonna basically discuss today. So as you'll see overall, the helmet looks pretty white apart from the areas of Humbrol grey number five which I've already started to paint but otherwise the helmet is pretty much white well underneath that is the layer of green so what we're going to do today is remove some of the liquid masking you may see areas like this which I'll try and get on camera hopefully that picks up in the light that is liquid masking little bubbles of liquid masking uh, masking fluid which I'd already painted onto the helmet beforehand now there's a piece underneath here, which I'll start with. So all you need to do is now that the gloss coat is over the top, you can find your areas of liquid mask and just gently sort of scratch it off basically. So you're removing the little bits, so oh, it fell off my finger there, little bits of liquid masking fluid, which is removing the top layer of gloss white because that was the last coat to go on. Again, let me just angle that, there you go. You can see that nicely now on camera. So the helmet is now starting to look like it's a white helmet with green plastic underneath. Uh, obviously we know it's not green plastic, it's green spray paint. But the original helmets, as I've said countless times, the original helmets, the stunt helmets, were made of a greeny coloured um, khaki sort of plastic uh, called HDPE or PP, I believe. So again, there's an area here. Uh, this area on the real helmets underneath the chin is the the thinnest piece of plastic on the helmet so that would appear that that's where the most paint came off so again you can see here i can just roll my thumb over it and the liquid masking is sort of coming off uh, again which then means that you're gently removing the top coat of white and also because of the way we did the layers you're then actually removing the red the oxide red primer as well so you can basically see once you start to do that you just roll or use your nail, there you go. There's more here. You need to sort of try and remember where you put it actually. That's another thing to remember. So take photos before you start. Uh, I've got areas here, I've got a little bit around here. I've got one part which I'd already removed just around the back there. And then there are some areas on top. There's another part here and here. So again, it's useful to try and remember where you'd put your uh, liquid masking fluid so that you can remove it. I'll take some photos in a minute which will then give you a chance to actually see it more in detail once the paint's been removed, sorry, once the liquid masking fluid's been removed. Um, but as I say, that then starts to give it that real appearance of the screen used helmets. So again, actually, I'm just trying to find out where I'd put it. That might not be some. This is it again. What I'll do is I'll look back at my photos. I know there's a piece here and there's a piece here, for example. I'll look back at the photos of my progress and then I'll be able to see that masking fluid there we go here's some so let's try and remove that there you go and you're now left with what looks like a chip in the paint just like the original helmets and by the time you've then weathered this a little bit i tend to use some of the neck trim and just rub it on the helmet in places so it looks like it's been scuffed by the time you do that you add a little bit of weathering to it make it a little bit dirtier it then really starts to look like the screen used helmets. So there we go, I think that'll do it today. As you can see, it's a rough and ready one take video and I'll show some photos of it in a moment uh, with the masking fluid removed. And then of course I can start adding the brow trim and continue with the painting. So that's it for now. And I will catch you in the next update on this RS Propmasters A&H Stunt Replica Project. <laughs>
here we go. As part of an ad hoc video, I changed my mind and thought I'd come back and show a little bit more in video form. So I'll just go around the helmet now. I didn't go over the top, but you'll see areas like this. If you look at the screen used helmets, quite a few of them were beaten up around here. As I say, this part around the neck was quite thin on the original helmets. So obviously as the plastic flexed, then the paint would have started to flake off slightly. So under the chin, I've given it quite a bit of abuse. And again, that's where the masking fluid was. And again, I've just rubbed that off or scratched it with my nail. Uh, this can all be tidied up later if I need to, but it looks quite rustic at the moment. And then just a couple of areas, it runs up here, which again is, is sometimes common. And then little chips here and there, a bit of damage under the front. In fact, that's just bits of paint coming off. The mo one that I'm modeling this on actually does seem to have these key marks here. So although not everything is modeled after one exact helmet, I've just gone for what hopefully looks like mild but realistic weathering. Uh, again, once this has got the brow trim and obviously the hobby tips and once it's painted, the little damage marks should look a little bit less obvious. But obviously I don't mind. The whole point of this is to look like screen used helmets. So again, that's just really a bit of a visual look around the helmet. And as I say, I've not gone over the top. I don't want it to look absolutely trashed. The whole point is, is that it could look like one that you actually see on screen. Uh, if you imagine if these were actually real troopers, you never know what sort of damage they would have had. The whole original trilogy is full of weathered characters. Look at C-3PO, R2-D2, the um, biker scouts, various people within the original trilogy are absolutely um, filthy. Whereas when a lot of us build replica stormtroopers, we keep them pristine. Now I understand that for trooping, but you know if you can weather a sand trooper, you can weather a biker scout, why can't you weather a standard TK, standard uh, clean stormtrooper as they call them. So anyway, that's it for now. I'll leave it there. And as I say, I will do more updates later once I've finished the painting. And I hope you're enjoying the videos. Do feel free to drop a like and subscribe, and I will speak to you in the next one. See you later.